good morning children until now we have discussed autotrophic nutrition and under heterotrophic nutrition we discussed nutrition in amoeba so today we will begin nutrition in man or human being we will learn about all the five different steps which occurs in nutrition and we will also see the parts of digestive system which includes alimentary canal as well as the digestive glands so you can start i can see here the digestive system it begins with the mouth and inside if you see inside of the mouth there is a oral cavity we also term it as buccal cavity and inside the buccal cavity we have uh, the salivary glands they are of three types which we will see later and then we have our teeth as well as tongue and then after the mouth you can see a pipe like structure which is called as the food pipe or esophagus the esophagus then leads to j shaped stomach and after the stomach if you see the you can see it is a small intestine which is again divided into three parts duodenum then you can see the large coiled part inside that is the jejunum and then the last part is called as ileum and this ileum will lead to the large intestine the large intestine again it is divided into three parts namely cecum c a e c u m cecum then the inverted u shaped the largest part of large intestine which is called and then the last part of uh, large intestine is uh, rectum and then anus so you can also see just near the cecum a small outgrowth which is nothing but appendix or vermiform appendix it is a vestigial organ of intestine now this has covered the parts of, parts of alimentary canal you can also see along with salivary glands which is present inside the mouth there are two other large glands which is visible here one is the liver which is the largest gland of our digestive system and then you can see just below the stomach pancreas okay that is the second largest gland here as i told you inside the buccal cavity we have the salivary glands so they are of three types located at various positions and the first one is the largest one called as the parotid glands okay the spelling is actually p a r o t i d parotid glands which is located just below the ear okay just below the ear inside the buccal cavity and then the second glands second pair of second glands are the submaxillary or they are also called as submandibular glands and if you see they are just present in the angles of the lower jaw okay and then the third is sublingual gland which is just present below your tongue so these are the three salivary glands which are present inside the buccal cavity and around 1 to 1 and 1/2 liters of saliva are secreted by them per day so next we can see here the next part inside the buccal cavity is the teeth we are familiar with the functions of teeth it is used for cutting chewing and grinding and you have already learnt in lower classes about the four different types of teeth so uh, in an adult human being there is uh, there are 32 teeth okay so 16 on the upper jaw and 16 16 on the lower jaw and in each jaw if you see there are uh, four incisors uh, two canines and uh, four premolars and six molars so this is a normal uh, amount of teeth which should be present but may not be the uh, same case in you or me okay so you can see here the position and the types of teeth present inside the buccal cavity along with the salivary glands and teeth we also have a muscular organ which is called the tongue and you can see in this diagram the location of taste buds in different regions of the tongue now let us start let begin with the process of nutrition as we saw earlier the first process is ingestion where the food food is just taken inside the mouth so food is ingested or taken inside the mouth through uh, with the help of our hands now the next step is digestion which begins inside the mouth or the buccal cavity itself as discussed earlier 
the buccal cavity con contains our teeth which helps in cutting chewing and grinding the food then it has the tongue along with taste buds it also helps in mixing the food with saliva and also swallowing the food and if you see saliva which is as i told you which is uh, released secreted by three types of salivary glands inside our mouth if you see saliva it contains three substances okay the well, first one is mucus second one is an enzyme called as ptyalin or salivary amylase and third one is another enzyme called as lysozyme okay lysozyme the mucus which is a component important component of the saliva it actually moists the food makes it wet it makes it soft and slippery and the enzyme salivary amylase or ptyalin this enzyme is very important because the digestion the digestion of carbohydrates begins inside the mouth so it converts starch into simple forms of sugar which is maltose this is done inside the mouth itself and then the third component of saliva is lysozyme which kills any harmful bacteria if it is present inside the food now the food present in the mouth after all these process is slightly digested and at this stage the food is termed as bolus b o l u s bolus we are always advised to brush our teeth properly and also rinse our mouth well after meals why because in case the food particles are left behind our te in our teeth then there is a possibility that they might be infected how there is a bacteria called as streptococcus mutans now this bacteria they will act on this food particles and they will start producing acids different types of acids and these acids might damage the parts of teeth the enamel as well as dentine okay and it will also cause dissolution of the calcium deposits in our teeth so if this process continues it might result in the formation of an yellowish layer on the surface of the teeth which is termed as dental plaque and if it is left unnoticed then it might result in acute pain and infection which might lead to tooth decay or dental caries and this might later become a cavity also so that is the reason why we are advised to take care of our teeth properly now the slightly digested food which we term it as bolus is now swallowed inside and pushed into the food pipe through the pharynx the food pipe is also termed as esophagus it is around 20 to 25 cm in length it is a narrow tube and it connects the pharynx which is present just uh, at the end of the mouth with the stomach if you see inside the uh, food pipe there are no digestive glands present so in case salivary amylase is acting on the food the same action continues even in the food pipe so how does the food now travel inside the stomach if you see the walls of the esophagus they can contract and expand and due to this contraction and expansion they are able to push the food inside the stomach and this contraction and expansion is given a special term which is called as peristalsis or peristaltic movement